Hola amigos, I'm the Spanish chef, former rally boy, and today I want to show you a real staple dish from my home country. As you probably noticed by now, we do love our garlic, but as well, we do love a chicken. So this dish is garlic chicken, pollo al ajillo, which as well is very commonly found made with rabbit. But I know a lot of people is a bit uh, squeamish about rabbit, you know, uh, for many it's more of a pet than an animal that you eat, so I thought I would do it with chicken. And as well, through the recipe I'm going to tell you a couple of tricks, like for example today that I'm going to add some potatoes to make it a family meal, or as well some modifications in case you want a bit more sauce later on. To make this recipe we're going to need a whole chicken, preferably free range or organic, fresh thyme, extra virgin olive oil, a glass of white wine, some fresh bay leaves and rosemary, a head of garlic, new potatoes, salt and pepper. You obviously can cook this recipe with any part of the chicken or even poussin, the baby chickens, it is so tender and so good. But I thought I would show you some techniques as well as just recipes and how to cook. I thought I'll show you how to quarter and how to cutinate, sorry, a chicken. So let's make the most of this opportunity. So here is our chicken. First we're gonna make a little cut in between the thigh and the breast which will expose the meat behind it. Pop the bone uh, in, in an attempt to separate it which will help you to cut in between the bones that joins the hip with the leg. Whole chickens comes generally without feet when you buy them from the supermarket and you should differentiate the ankles with this, just make a little cut in there. You will see there is a line of fat which separates exactly the joint in between the drumstick and the thigh. Make a cut through it, it should be quite easy and soft. Now grab the body of the chicken and we are going to discard the carcass. Take a look at that strip again of fat, which marks exactly where you should be cutting with a long chef knife. Just go through all the bones, which is the, the, the rib cage, and then just separate it at the bottom. So what's left is normally called the crown on chicken, and because I want to make chicken stock, I'm going to remove the chicken supremes from the rib cage itself. So I'm going to run the blade of knife through the middle of that chest bone so that I have each chicken breast on each side and with the help of my fingers and by running the blade by the side of it you'll see that it very easily comes out and separate. Just make a little cut and incision at the end and you should be left with the rib cage on your chopping board and the chicken supreme on your own hand. Now remove the tip of the chicken wing which has no meat and it makes better chicken stock than it does garlicky chicken and cut just at the end of the bone of the chicken wing itself so that you are left with a clean chicken breast. Cut it in half and you should be left with 10 manageable pieces as opposed to 8 as I said earlier. With all the bones you can make a quick and easy chicken stock by just simmering them in a couple of glasses of water with a carrot, an onion and a few garlic cloves and it will help you to make a bit more of a sauce later on. So let's start with the cooking. Place a very large frying pan or saute over high heat, pour in off extra virgin olive oil and put all your pieces of chicken skin side down. Because I want to make a family meal out of it, I'm going to be boiling some new potatoes until they are just about cooked, which should take about 15 minutes. Season your pieces of chicken on both sides with salt and pepper, and now we're going to be facing the usual problem of boiling new potatoes whole, which have different sizes, so you have two options. Either you add the smaller new potatoes later into the water, or you remove them before the larger ones, once you put them all together. Now I'm going to start turning my chicken, as you can see it has caramelized nicely, it has rendered down some fat, and it has you know, browned and the skin has sort of crisping, crisping up. Once your potatoes are nearly cooked, just drain them from the water and add them into the pan with the bay leaves, the sprigs of rosemary, the whole garlic and the fresh thyme. Give it a good shake so that everything sort of lingers together and pour your glass of manzanilla sherry or any white wine if you don't have it. 
give it a good shake to make sure that it deglazes the Switch the heat off and we're gonna roast it in the oven for the last 10 minutes so the potatoes take quite a nice color and a lot of the chicken flavor infused with the white wine and the herbs. Ooh, this chicken is cooked to perfection. Take a look. A little bit of sauce in there on the bottom but not too much, just as it should be. I was going to plate it up, but I don't think I'm going to bother because it looks terrific to me. Very rustic on the terracotta with the golden potatoes. You know, it's just shouting, have me for dinner. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got inspired by how far sometimes five, seven ingredients, whatever they are, can go. Anyway, buen provecho. Hasta pronto. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, share it and subscribe.